Living by the waterside in houseboats and boats goes back a long way. One such place that's always attracted this alternative lifestyle is Tags Island, located on the non-tidal part of the Thames. Dave Raven, a resident, explains the history and lifestyle of the island. In brief, it got its name from a gentleman called Thomas Tagg, who built a boathouse here and opened a small bar and rented out fishing boats, and that was way back in the very early, early 1800s. It really became famous at the turn of the 20th century when the really grand houseboats of the time, the Victorian houseboats, all were moored around the edge here for the winter. And then in the early 1914 period, a uh, casino was built here, uh, opened by Fred Carno, which was uh, the biggest casino in the area, and, and people came up by boat, and it was a magical time. That eventually fell into disrepair during, between the wars. It was demolished in 1971, and then the island as it is now, the sort of like the third incarnation came then, when all these houseboats were built around the outside, and also the lagoon was dug out, making it a, a self-supporting community of 61 boats altogether. There are two types of houseboat community, those that are in the estuary, those that are tidal, and they go up and down and have to face often quite strong current conditions, and they have to be proper boats. Once you move away from tidal and you become like the Thames here or like many of the canals or the lakes in the UK, then it doesn't have to be a proper boat anymore. It doesn't have to have a pointy end and a curved end. It can just be a large pontoon, a large platform made of either steel or GRP or even concrete and from that you put your boat your accommodation on top that gives you massive stability what you don't want on a houseboat is the boat tipping from side to side as you move and a large flat base gives you that stability but that of course only as I say works if you're in calm conditions where you don't have tides or strong winds wherever there is water you get extra light reflections whether it's the sea or whether it's rivers or lakes the the quality of, of light on the river here uh, and bearing in mind England we often get quite gray days but even then the light is absolutely wonderful so you get reflections you get lots of wildlife and boat activity and I think the best analogy probably is that in an ordinary bricks and mortar house your back garden is the place where you retreat to here we don't have back gardens this is our back garden uh, and that is without price I think Britain is, is, a, is a, a nautical race. We love messing around in boats. Uh, in the summer here, it's a, the river's quiet today, but in the summer this river is heaving with boats and, and boat traffic. People love nothing better than being on the river. So I think it's an attraction that many of us have, but not, an, not many of us are able to put it into, into reality and do something with it. This is one of the oldest houseboats still in existence on the Thames, built by, or built for Fred Carnot in 1908. It cost £8,000 and was the grandest houseboat of its time. His wife never saw it. She never, never came on board. It was used for his girlfriends. It now is owned by David Gilmore of Pink Floyd as a recording studio. People who live on houseboats are a little bit different from the norm. Uh, and I suppose that you would expect that. Uh, I think they tend to be a little bit more arty. Here on Tags Island, we have a lot more, if you like, of the creative individuals doing things. Um, but you don't have to be arty. It's, it's not a gypsy lifestyle at all. I, I think it, it, but obviously it's something which will only appeal to, I would think, perhaps a maximum of 10%. We find on the island when visitors come, they polarize right down the middle. Uh, and they either say, oh, we love it here, Can, you know, we'd love to join you. And the other half who don't say anything at all and walk away shaking their heads. So, uh, so I think it, I, island life, houseboat life does polarize individuals quite dramatically. I wouldn't live in any other way. Uh, I would hate to live in bricks and mortar. I really would. I could never go back. Hand on heart, I will never go back to living in bricks and mortar, wherever I live.